Marco! Polo! Marco! Polo! William, where are you? Judy, you said to meet at the beautiful flower fields, so I'm here at Shriner's Iris Garden. And William, I'm at a beautiful flower fields at Adam and Peony's. And we're going to tell you about both wonderful places next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. <laughs> I made it, Judy. <laughs> we're in the beautiful display gardens at Adelman Peonies. And later in the show, we're going to take you back to Shredder's Iris Gardens. But you can get to both of these beautiful display gardens off of I-5 near Brooks at exit 263. Also coming up on the show today, we are going to show you some outstanding geraniums. We'll also be giving you the tips of the month with Jan McNeilan. But coming up first, deciduous azaleas. Well, I am standing here with Sarah at Portland Nursery on Stark Street. And Sarah, we're going to be talking today about azaleas, but kind of a twist on them. These are the, the deciduous azaleas, correct? Yes. So tell me, why, why is there a difference? What's, what is the difference between the two varieties of stuff? Okay, so most um, azaleas you see around are evergreen, right. so they keep their leaves. Um, deciduous are going to drop their leaves. Okay. So. They, um, as a bonus, you know, when things are deciduous, drop their leaves, usually some nice fall color appears. So these have some actually quite striking fall color, cool. which is nice. Um, traditional azaleas also um, need shade. They can't take the hot sun, whereas these can actually do better in really? the sun. Okay. They can still do shade, but they get a little more straggly. Um, and the coloring on these is a little more unique. It's um, like this one's a very, delicate kind of, of pinky color, oh. but this one here is going to actually be a really vibrant orange, um, and this one's going to be a pinky orange. So they, they kind of just have a different hue than, than most Well, and I have heard that. I've heard that one of the things that, that some friends of mine that love these really think the world of them about is because their colors are much more brilliant than just the reds, pinks, and, and the softer colors of most evergreen azalea. So that's a real bonus for these. Mm -hmm. And they've got, I mean, as you can tell, they're just prolific. And um, as you were kind of saying before, uh, before on the show, um, that so you've seen them you know, where it's just flowers first, it's just leaves first, yeah, it's kind of both yeah. at once. So, you know, it's like this one here doesn't have a ton of leaves, but it just makes those buds pop. So let's go over the three that we picked out. What are the names of these? Yeah, so this one here is Irene Coster, um, and it's got kind of a soft rosy pink um, with yellow, and it's uh, scented. Yes. So nice scent. And I've heard that almost all of them are. Yes. That's, quite a few. That, that's a big bonus, isn't it? And quite this one, this beautiful are. orange one. Yeah, this it. one is called Gibraltar. It's got uh, bronzy leaves and then a really bright um, orangey red, kind of like a fiery color. And, and then this lovely one here, I love the shape of this one already too. The shrub is beautiful. Yeah, and this one, as you can see, it's already got the nice bronzing yeah. going on. So it's gonna have a really nice red fall color on the leaves, um, but it's a pink and orange flower. Uh, and this one is one. Cannon's Double. Oh, so Cannon's Double, sorry. I'm that's to a wonderful one. <laughs> and then you guys also, though, you have a, I would assume that with the planting, it's all the same, just like you would plant any other shrub well, make sure the drainage is there. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and do you think these are like regular azaleas where they need a lot of acid soil? Um, yeah, I mean, everything likes good drainage, basically. Um, they do like the acidic soil. So in the Pacific Northwest, I mean, azaleas, roadies, is part of the roadie family. Um, they're going to do well. Yeah, it's right. just kind of you know, our specialty. Here at Portland Nursery, you guys even, there are some natives and you guys carry those as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have quite the native section, actually. Yes, you, you do. You have one yes. of the most in, impressive <laughs> native sections I've seen around. Thank you. So for more information on these wonderful azaleas, whether you've heard of them or not, uh, we'll go take you over to Gardentime.tv, and then you can click over to Portland Nursery. Come out and visit them, because they have a tremendous selection of natives, and they have a wonderful selection of deciduous azaleas. <music> Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Owl's Garden and Home. Bring home the hues of summer with our gorgeous hanging baskets, grown locally on our farm. Choose from sun or shade combinations to instantly brighten up your home. Hanging baskets for a pop of color that brightens your home all season long. 
Al's Garden and Home in Woodburn, Sherwood, Gresham, and now in Wilsonville. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days, June 2nd at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. Peonies, bold and beautiful. An old favorite, but ever new. And perfect for your garden. At Adelman Peonies, you'll find hundreds of different peonies. Bush, Ito, and tree peonies covering 20 acres. Come stroll the display garden, then find a special plant or bouquet to take home. Join us any day of the week for beautiful color or weekends for special events. Adelman Peonies is just east of I-5 at exit 263 on Brook Lake Road or online at peonyparadise.com. What a beautiful morning to be in Northeast Portland. I'm at Marbitz Greenhouse and Nursery with Larry. And Larry, what a beautiful place you have. Thank you. We've been here 90 years. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you are, we are surrounded by a sea of geraniums. About how many do you grow? Right now we grow about 8,000 from cuttings. Wow, uh -huh. wow. That's a beautiful process. You guys have it down. So tell us about some of the varieties that you do grow. They're just gorgeous. Well, this is our geranium greenhouse and we brought together a few of the most popular ones naturally. Red is always the top seller. We grow Beautiful. probably about 25% red. And along with red, hot pink is very popular. Also, these variegated leaf geraniums are very popular with customers in mixed planters. They really pop, even if they're not blooming, they have the pretty, so pretty. Uh, variegated foliage. Once again, if you want something that's more functional than beautiful, then we have scented geraniums. And so this is a lime scented geranium. This is a, a chocolate mint scented geranium. Ooh. And this is a citronella scented geranium, which actually repels mosquitoes. So you put that on your patio and sit, sit around at nighttime, brush the foliage, and it repels mosquitoes. And so it's the foliage that is fragrant, not yes, the flowers. Exactly. They do bloom, but the blooms are kind of insignificant. Ah, so not as showy as like some of these red ones no, that is gorgeous. Not. And so you do have so many different colors. I'm seeing maybe 10, 12 different colors. So something really for everyone. <laughs> and can you give us some maybe tips for the home gardener, what we should be doing to keep them so beautiful? When people buy them out of the greenhouses, they've been in this nice controlled environment. <laughs> so once they go outside in the real world, then they have to fight for themselves a little bit more. So <laughs> you have to remember to fertilize and water. We like to use like a slow release fertilizer such as Osmocote. That's very, very convenient for most customers. And naturally watering when a plant needs water, you need to water it. But you don't want to overwater geraniums because they tend to be a little bit better on the dry side. Okay. So in a pot, they're going to dry a little bit more in the ground. So people ask how much should I water? Well, it's kind of left to where you have the plant sure. and what the days are like. And so full sun? Full sun okay. is their best place, but they can take some shade. Well, those are really great tips because we always need those to take care of our geraniums, but I want to go see those special ones. So let's go over okay. to that other greenhouse. Okay, let's do that. All right. Larry, you do fantastic baskets. So what variety is this one? This is the standard ivy geranium. So and a cascading so one. It's a cascading mm -hmm. type. The leaves are a little more waxy than the, the uh, zonal geraniums. So Mother's Day was yesterday and we sold quite a few of these. These are very good for the full sun area. You have, um, this is a rose color and a lavender color. Now one thing I want to mention, maintenance on geraniums. You get a bad flower, you always just come in here and you take the stem down to the main stem. So if you break it down, it usually breaks off very easily. Oh, perfect. Uh -huh. So that's how, you, and you need to do that on a continual basis to keep the plant looking well groomed. Ah, and let's look at some other ones over here. And what are these? So here's some more examples of baskets. This is a calliope. A calliope is a cross between an ivy geranium, a geranium and an upright geranium. So what they did was they crossed it. And so this plant has a tendency to grow sideways. So over time it comes down. And so this plant plant uh, is a very good plant because it's, 
And I should say these are all sterile, so they don't set seed at all. They're called tetraploids. Ah, and they'll keep blooming really keep heavily. Blooming. Mm -hmm. And then this one's unusual. I love the foliage. This one we call the Swiss geranium. It also goes by the name Cascade geranium. You go to Europe, they put them all over the place. They make Gorgeous. small blooms, but they're very floriferous. In July and August, September, they're just covered with flowers. Oh, beautiful. And then this is amazing. So you do tree geraniums. I know that that takes an incredible long time. They're just amazing growers here. Here's an example of just a novelty plant that we grow a few of. I don't have any more to sell this year, but we grow a few every year, so this is a red one. This is about five years old, and so at the end of the season, we could bring it in the, drain, in the uh, greenhouse to overwinter. And most of these geraniums will not live outside throughout the winter. No, but really, something really to see. What a showstopper in a garden. So put your order in for next year. You have to come out to Marbets, meet Larry, and you got to talk to Ernie. He's wonderful. He's 90 years old, and he's at the cash register and just a gem of a guy. He'll tell you some stories. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's lovely. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. <laughs>So I am standing in a beautiful garden with a lovely yard and we are talking to Amy who is the owner here and also you work for the Regional Water Providers Consortium, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So we're going to go over thinking of water usage, which we do all the time. We're really going to consider summertime usage right now and you're going to give us five tips on how to do that. Yeah. Um, so the first one is you want to make sure um, you're watering early in the morning before 10 a.m or after 6 p.m. to avoid evaporation. And that's just really a way to save water because yeah. we don't think of it, evaporation as yeah. wasting water, but yeah. that happens in the heat. Yes. Okay, Amy, what's another one? So you want to water thoroughly and less frequently. So you, this will encourage your plants to develop a deeper root system. Plants that have a larger root system are more effective at accessing water and need to be watered less frequently. So that you're basically just saying if you just pay attention to how long you're watering, and making sure that it goes into the ground, you're gonna make the roots go deeper, which makes the plant stronger. Exactly, yep. And then what's the next one? So the next one is know how much to water. So the amount of water needed each week changes uh, by your area. So we actually have a website, conserveh2o.org, that you can go to and see how much water that you need to water that week. We recommend about an inch a week, um, but you can also check the website depending on the uh, weather in your area. If it's one inch of water, you, you just do that all at one time? No, so actually what you're going to want to do is create a schedule. So if it says an inch a week, you want to break that up into different days. Okay. Um, so you can create a schedule for different plants with different needs. Okay, so let's say that you've, you've figured that schedule thing out, you set it up, but you noticed in like one of the like maybe 10 minute segments on Tuesday, you get some puddles or you're seeing some water run off. What do you do about that? Yeah, so what you can do is break that up. Um, we call that a cycle and soak. So mm -hmm. instead of 10 minutes, you can break it up into five minutes, uh, two five minute segments. So then you allow that water to really get down and soak into the roots. So you just wait for the first five minute segments, maybe maybe like 30 minutes, and then just turn it back on, finish yep. that 10 minute segments. So you're still on schedule. Yes, Perfect. exactly. And then but there's another one coming, isn't there? There is. So prevent runoff by applying only the amount of soil your soil can absorb. Okay. So, yeah, much of the soil in our area is clay, like I said, so you want to do shorter watering times and allow that to absorb into your, into your garden. And that really makes sense because we do forget, at least I know I have in places, especially if it's a new place or a new mm -hmm. home that I've rented or, or purchased, I don't know the history of that place and so I always want to make it pretty and put yeah. stuff on it then I see water just running. So yep. that, that makes yep. a lot of sense. Yeah. And what's our last tip? So our last one is you want to add compost or mulch. Um, so this will help absorb and store water. This was important for the health and the well-being of your plant as well as prevent weeds. So. Yeah, and again, that's a really a lot of common sense, but when you're, when you're you know, new to watering or new about what you're doing or a place, you, you just think, I don't know anything about this. Yeah. And you know, and for the record, you are a relatively I new am, gardener, yes. aren't you? But you've done watering stuff yes. for a long time. Yes. So now I finally get a practice. <laughs> well, you know, it's it really isn't that terrifying to learn how to water wisely. So for more information, as always, we'll invite you to go to GardenTime.tv. We'll click you over there. You can even print out this list and use it every time you water to make sure you're doing it just right. Amy, what a delight! Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. 
but it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Two stages, 25 shows, one sweet weekend. It's the 26th annual Oregon Jamboree presented by Boulder Falls Inn, starring Brett Eldridge, Brantley Gilbert, Marin Morris, Low Cash, Jared Neiman, and Diamond Rio. One more day. The Oregon Jamboree happening August 3rd through the 5th. Tickets and camping on sale now at OregonJamboree.com. I'm in the beautiful display gardens at Adelman Peonies with Carol Adelman. Carol, the gardens are gorgeous this year as always. Oh, thank you. The sunshine always helps bring out the color. <laughs> yeah, they are so pretty. And really, mm -hmm. it's lovely to stroll around the garden here, but are there other places to stroll? Yes, people are welcome to go out in the field. It is quite a little hike, but they're welcome to go out and see what's blooming there. Uh, there's so many acres there. It's really interesting to see them all in mass out there in the fields. 25 acres. Wow, wow. <laughs> and I know when we come out this time of year, um, you can, you can um, stroll around, but then you can also bring things home. Yes, we have cut flowers that you can purchase and potted peonies to place in your garden. And uh, of course, the new peony book. Ah, yes, we talked about that just a few weeks ago. <laughs> Carol, the display garden is gorgeous, but it really is something to see. You see those plants in their place and how big they're going to get, what they're going to look like. Yes, you can see their stature and whether they're very upright. And uh, also we have a lot of companion plants. We planted it like it would be someone's garden so that you can really enjoy it for many seasons of the year. I like it because you can take ideas home. You just bring your camera and take ideas all around the garden. I think that's the best part. Yes, a lot of people bring their cameras. And so in the little nursery there, and there's a lot of different kinds of peonies, it's really hard to pick, but let's go over like the different kinds of peonies that are for the garden. Well, there are the species peonies, but they kind of stay up in the mountains where they belong. <laughs> and the bush peonies, those are the ones that people are most familiar with that die down to the ground in the winter. The tree peony has woody stems that stay up in the winter. And then the in intersectional or ito is a cross between the tree peony and bush peony and it also dies to the ground in the winter, has beautiful foliage on it. And so we pick out the one that we love mm -hmm. and we bring it home. So how do we care for it? Well, if you buy a potted plant, we have a sheet of instructions, but mostly they like at least six hours of sun and well-drained soil. And they, if they're happy, they can stay in the same place for 50 to 100 years. Oh my gosh, not many parent perennials that do that. No. That is amazing. That is amazing. And coming out these next few weekends, there's lots of um, activities to do. There's a Volkswalk, and uh, we just had the Mother's Day special. We'll have a special on the flowers for Memorial Weekend. Ah, that is really nice. And all the information's on the website. Yes. Uh, so, you know, there's so many things that you'd need to come out and see in this beautiful garden, the whole area here around the farm. Just make sure you bring a hat, wear good shoes, because there's a little bit of walking to do out in this beautiful area. So please go to Gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to Adelman's and you can find out all the informa information about coming out to this beautiful garden. Thanks so much. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway.
Your car does more than get you where you need to go. It helps you live the life you love. At Capital Subaru, we're 100% dedicated to finding what works for you. And with a wide selection, personalized service, and plenty of perks, you won't need to go anywhere else to find it. Let us help you make the most of your day. Come shop your way on the Parkway. Adventure is calling. Hurry into Capital Subaru and lease the versatile and fuel-efficient new 2018 Subaru Outback 2.5i CVT. Now just $192 per month. Capital Subaru, your way on the Parkway. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonite has the answer. 8 Insect Control takes care of most lawn and garden insect problems. Effective against more than 100 insects, it can be used on flowers, vegetables, fruits, and even on houseplants. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. Well, it is the tips of the month with Jan McNeilan. And Jan, we have a ring around the rosy here. We do. So we you do. have this lemon that you have been having experiments with. No, I've been trying to kill it and it <laughs> won't. And what happened is I put it outside for the winter thinking that would do it <laughs> because it gets scale so badly. And I did want to winter it over in the house with the other stuff. So I just put it outside and I thought it, it would die. But then the leaves looked it's really beautiful. good. <laughs> and then the leaves, then I thought, oh, great because the leaves are starting to curl cool. so that means it's going to die and instead look at all the new growth i cannot believe how much new growth there is up here well we're going to be making limoncello with you next year something <laughs> so i'm going to cut off some of the bad affected leaves. Bad, okay. or, bad leaves and and there's some that have got root weevil damage and some slug damage on it and and, we'll and then I'll baby it for the summer and we'll see what happens. <laughs> I think it's a great experiment because yeah. lemons, I think it's something new to a lot of gardeners and really they're tough plants so you can see how tough they are. Well they're tougher than I thought, <laughs> that's for sure. And so we have to talk about vegetables because it is that time of year to plant vegetables. It is and, and in many nurseries you'll find uh, the, the peat pots or the cocoa fiber pots and uh, it's just the reminder is that it's not like any other little plastic pot you can sit and water it until mm -hmm. you get it in the ground because your new roots are right, right here so i haven't planted these yet but i sit them in a tray with a little water so they'll take it take it up and now do you cut the core a little bit so that the well, roots come out or i've done it, both it back? i've done it both ways it doesn't make that much difference because when i picked them up from the nursery they were beautiful nice fine Excellent. white leaves there so and white roots and you're saving plastic from the environment absolutely perfect and then you have this Hoya that we love <laughs> visiting it's usually in your greenhouse or in your kitchen right. and it looks like you're gonna make another plant well I'm no I'm actually reducing the size of oh, this one a okay. lot um, this there are two different varieties here but this is this is what this more or less looked like till I ripped it apart okay. a little bit ago and I have a new pot for it, and I'm going to put it back in the kitchen where the this um, skylight gives them a lot of light, and they do bloom. They are so nice, and really the blooms are these pink kind of waxy flowers. Yeah. They fragrant. Yeah, it's really a nice neat. nice plant. Uh, I got two of these so that they match when I'm eventually done. But a reminder when you have a, a, a pot 
that has oh. a drain hole in it to make sure you take that little plug, plug out. out. Sure. Because it, it looks like it should drain. Well, it won't if it doesn't have an ability okay. to do that. And then are you using certain potting soil, garden soil? What are you using? Just, I have just black gold. Oh, here. right. Perfect. That's, That's great soil. And so this is what I did a little while ago. I, t I just took everything out that uh, was dead and took it. I s made it smaller. And so I'm, what I'm gonna do is put these stakes in mm -hmm. and, and put more potting soil over the top of this, cover it up, water it well, and then r start wrapping it again mm -hmm. so that it'll be up and out of the way and we'll see. I expect it to look like, like, the, uh, like the lime and, or lemon. Uh, does with new growth, but we'll see. I want this one to grow, okay. so I'm not sure. <laughs> and then what kind of light? Because you have a as lot of light. As much light as possible okay. on these. I mean, I think that's the only reason they bloom. And most times in old-fashioned farmhouse kitchens, they would have Hoya plants right, right, right. going back and forth. And not too much water? They're not really... Yeah, I just... I, um, I don't... Water hogs? I just put my finger in and see... Uh, how damp it is. And then here's a bunch if you want More some cuttings. cuttings. Okay, <laughs> I'll try them. <laughs> and then the other thing we've run into, and I'm gonna move this. Okay, I'm gonna take it here. All right, that'll work. All right. Um, I've got some workmen here fixing some caulking on a window, and we found carpenter ants today. Ah. And so we're gonna, I put some borax powder out. There's other, um, there's other ant killers as such. This is for sugar ants. Okay. There's a real g very good ID uh, uh, extension publication from Washington State. Okay. And at, I was, it was not hard for me to identify right. them as carpenter ants. And you can go today. online too for the OSU bulletins Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Well even OSU we use this one a oh, lot. Oh okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. And you were saying something, there's a chat line with OSU? There's a Ask the Expert. Okay. So you can go on the Master Gardener website and it'll say Ask the Expert. You can go on and ask a question and get an answer from maybe a plant specialist or extension agent or a really highly trained master gardener. Oh, that's really good because sometimes you're thinking, oh my gosh, there's no answer to this. Who am I going to call? That's a great thing. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, you know, we always learn so much um, at Jan's every month, so tune in next month and we'll learn some more things. All Thanks right. so much. We'll see how it's all going. Yeah, definitely. <laughs>a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. Gardening makes for wonderful family time. Whether it's updating your landscape or planting a veggie garden, at Portland Nursery, our great selection and staff of professionals can help ensure your family's success. Visit portlandnursery.com for a list of our classes, events, or sign up for our newsletter. Portland Nursery, let our family help your family grow at 50th and Stark or 90th and Division. When you plant your flower baskets and containers this year, consider Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix for the best results. This worm castings enriched, well-drained potting soil has a control release fertilizer to feed your plants up to six months. Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix now contains resilience for enhanced plant growth. Available at garden centers everywhere. For more information, visit blackgold.bz. All the riches of the earth. Hi, I'm Burl Mossel with Rare Plant Research. We're a nursery and garden. You're invited to join us the one week in the year that we're open to the public. You can tour our gardens and get inspiration for your own garden. We have 10 greenhouses full of rare and exotic plants. Enjoy lunch from a local caterer while tasting wine at the greenhouses. We will be sampling our wines from Villa Catalana Cellars in the Garden Conservatory Tasting Room. For directions and information, visit us at rareplantresearch.com. Join us and get inspired. The irises are blooming. The Shriners Iris Display Garden is now open to the public. Surround yourself with a rainbow of color of over 500 irises or take a stroll in our 10-acre display garden. Smell the fragrance as you see iris paired with other beautiful blooming plants. Check out our cut flower display and pick up something for that iris lover in our gift shop. Take home a cut flower bouquet or order some for your own garden. We're easy to find. Take the Brooks exit off I-5 and follow the signs. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. 
high quality plants, and great customer service are our trademark. Looking for summer color that will blow your socks off? Try trailing begonias. We have all our four inch trailing begonias at 20% off. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden, just off I-5 near Aurora. It is finally time to move out to our decks and our patios. Well, I am at Terra Casa with Diana. And Diana, you can help us really decorate those, ide those ideas. We're hoping so. So tell us about these little cars. And these aren't just cars for the kids. These are for big kids. These are for us. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fun, functional art for your, for your garden, for your patio, for your back deck. Um, these are coolers, actually. Most of them are coolers out here. There are some planters as well. And they are... Um, meant to be outdoors year round. They have plugs that go into uh, inside to, for drainage Draining. and everything, but they were invented by a guy named Aaron Jackson from a company called Think Outside. And uh, he started this company, he was the brainchild, and he's now employed about 300 people um, wow. in small communities in um, other countries that can make these and um, gives them a job and it's very sustainable. It is, they're all recycled and they're really durable too. Very much so. They're all metal. They're all welded together with rivets. Yes. Excellent. And the, the unique shapes. I mean, there's something for everybody's hobby or their interest. Great conversation piece when you have this on your patio filled with Corona, right? <laughs> and Airstream. I mean, there's a whole club about Airstream people. Yes. So that's really clever. And people that love cows and animals and even motorcycle enthusiasts. Oh, yes. Motorcycles, boats, there's, there's everything. There's all different kinds, uh, something for everyone um, to put in their yard. And then they make a variety of um, yard art um, that you can hang outside, uh, bird feeders as well as planters that can go outside and metal um, pocket holders, po wall pocket holders. So there's a, just a, a huge variety. This is, uh, it's all recycled materials as well, which is really nice and uh, it's, it's fun, very it is fun. fun. It is fun because you can have this usable art right on your deck or patio. You really need to come out to Terra Casa to see all the beautiful pieces, to add some interest and fun to your patios. Thanks so much, Diana. Thanks, Judy. So I'm standing in the beautiful display gardens of Shriner's Iris Gardens, and I'm here with Steve Shriner. And Steve, we're gonna talk about the, all the different types of iris there are, because if you get all these different types, plant them in your garden at home, you can actually get irises to bloom for three months, even more. That's right, William. Exactly. You can start out here April 1st with little miniature dwarf iris that are short, six inches high. This doesn't happen to be a miniature dwarf. It's a little bigger. It's called Aramosa Skies, but it's the same size. And this is fireplace ember. They start April 1st. Then wow. you step up two weeks later to uh, standard dwarf bearded iris, which um, this self-indulgence right here so this would be April 15th, this would be blooming. That early, April yeah. 15th, wow. And then uh, shortly thereafter, you're gonna have these intermediates like raspberry shocker. Remember, there isn't much color no. in the garden no, there isn't. in April. And these are really gorgeous. And never mind fluorescent lights, when you see these outside in the garden, this is outer edge, this is uh, AB, it's uh, arrow, arrow bread, uh, brash and bold. And this one here is bold statement. These are intermediates. These bloom well into May. Wow. And then, and then you follow that with the tall beardeds. This is Cloud Ballet. I think this is about my favorite color. Yeah, I love the sky blue. And uh, so now you're going into the uh, very beginning of June. Good grief. And, then and there's still more. There's still more because we also have Louisiana irises, which bloom in June. So that's three months of iris bloom right there. And that doesn't even count the reblooming irises, wow. some of which start in July. And the thing that I am amazed about by this is because this family of plants, so many are hardy that you really do get a, a amazing variance of sizes and heights. And, and even the bloom size really can change drastically. Exactly, it's, it's really, uh, it's such a delight. What what color does to us? It's yeah. just uh, it's just marvelous. And uh, but I did want to talk about what our next two weekends have in store. Because 
That is <clears throat> your big fun time every year, isn't it? Tell me about it. Yeah, so, well, we had fun this weekend with Mother's Day and we had a nice big crowd because the weather cooperated. We're grateful for that. Right. But uh, this coming weekend, there's gonna be another one full of events. We're going to have a Volkswalk from nine in the morning till three. We're gonna have a demonstration on splitting irises and, and replanting them. We're gonna have one on flower arranging. It's the Kaiser Iris Festival. And we're gonna have two uh, uh, wonderful uh, enterprises, one that sells um, elixir liqueur from Germanica wow. Florentina in uh, Florence, Italy, and the other is Spiritopia. So that's this weekend. The next weekend is um, the um, Memorial Day, the barbecue jazz put on by the Knights of Columbus, the Calamity Jazz Band come back for their second year from Eugene, Dixieland Jazz Band, and there's going to be an artist fair. So you'll be able to see a lot of beautiful art Wonderful. out there. So. And all that stuff. They can find all that stuff out on, on your website exactly. too, right? That's right. Well, exactly. you know, I have to tell you, I've been to all of these events and I've tasted a lot of the different beverages as well. So for more information, go to gardentime.tv. We'll kick you over there, gather up all that information for yourself and then come out and not only have a great time with food and drink and family and friends, but have a great time in these display gardens. Are you done sniffing there, buddy? Oh, they smell good too. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as good as... No, anyway, really good. So please come. <laughs>
So I've got a diagram up above your head here uh -huh. that kind of shows uh, the anatomy of a sprinkler system. Yeah. So I'll start here. This would be your water line to your house. Uh -huh. So you tap off of the water line to your house and go to a main stop. This is going to be what you use to isolate it for the winter, for um, to, uh, to winterize it or to do repairs sure. or anytime you want to shut it off. Then the next thing is a backflow. This particular one is a double check. There are other kinds we can talk about later. Um, and then this is a drain. Another so, thing for winterization. Another thing, because okay. you want to, you want basically want to drain the main line, the sure. pressurized line for the winter. Sure. Okay. So then after that, we've got the the main line. So this is the pressurized line, and then it goes to the valves, and the valves are they run the different zones or stations. Uh -huh. So um, each station would have um, a set of sprinklers based on how many gallons per minute you have available. Which is very important. It's the amount of gallons, not the amount right. of sprinklers. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. People ask me all the time how many sprinkler heads on a zone. Yeah. Well, it isn't how many heads on a zone. It's how many gallons you have to use at one time. Okay. So, Cindy, after the zones, what, what else is left in the system? Well, the valves then are wired back to the controller. Uh -huh. And then the controller can have a rain sensor on it to shut it off when it rains. Sure. Um, that's pretty much it. So now, Cindy, we've seen the, the, the schematic up there, mm -hmm. which is, you know shows us what, but let's just go over this stuff that's more specifically. Tell me what these are again. These are valves. So uh -huh. as you saw up above, this is a, a zone valve. Okay. This is a zone valve with a backflow preventer. Oh, okay. So we talked about um, that kind of backflow up there. This is the other kind. Mm -hmm. So you would have one of these hooked to your valve. They come, they come that way. Yeah. Um, and you'd have one for every zone. Now this type stands above the ground. A, a backflow preventer basically just prevents water from your sprinkler system backflowing into the public water supply. There you go. That's that's pretty simplistic. And it, it it's the only code thing on, you on an irrigation system. Yeah. So then, now when when we talked about drip systems, all of the little heads here had colors as well, but. These are different, right? Right, right. <laughs> those were gallons, right? Right. right. And these are? These, these are gallons. Well, those were gallons, too. Those were oh, gallons okay. per hour because drip okay. is low yeah. pressure, low volume. All this right. is gallons per minute. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So this would be, uh, where we were talking about all the gallons you could use at one yeah. time on your zone, this is how you calculate it. Oh, okay. So each head, one head is not equal to another. Each one basically um, is, uh, uses a different amount of water based on how far the head throws and what pattern it throws. So if it's a circle or if it's a, like a half circle, all right. of that stuff. Okay, right. and then the, the width that the water goes or the length. Distance okay. from the head out. Okay. So um, for instance, this, this is just a plain spray body. And the, uh, there's two kinds of, of sprinkler heads. There's spray heads, which do a fan that just waters the entire area the entire time. And then there are rotors. These are just large and small rotors. But they're a single stream that moves back and forth. So Cindy, you have five design tips that are kind of the rules that you live by. What are those? Well, the first would be um, calculate your gallons, like we talked about. Um, if you don't know how many gallons per minute you have to use, then you don't, you can't really design efficiently. Yeah. You, you may be using too many, too many heads on a zone, which is the worst, or you're not getting as much out of your zones as you could be getting. Okay. Um, you should be using, uh, number two would be use on a residential system. The, the best idea is just use one inch pipe throughout the whole project. Um, if you've got, you know, acreage or something bigger, then you might use different pipe, but for just a residential, you know, system, that, that would be the best choice. Um, head to head coverage. No. So explain that to me. That means, um, because heads don't water right around the base of themselves. Sure. They throw away from themselves. Yeah. They need the other heads to water their own feet. Oh, okay. So if you've got, if you've got heads that are spaced and, and they're watering like this, then you're missing the most important part. You want, you want complete 100% coverage. You need two heads watering every square foot. So your minimum. elbows would be the sprinklers. Would be the sprinklers, and, and basically they're, you're, okay. you're watering all the way. Because if you're doing this, you're missing the most yeah, important part. Yeah, that makes sense. You know. Okay. Um, you know, don't mix heads. So we talked about the fact that there are spray heads and rotors. Right. Because they water differently, different minutes, you don't want to put them both on the same zone. 
So you'd have all spray heads on one zone, all rotors on another zone. That's the reason for the zones. Right, okay. because basically because uh, spray heads are going to run 8 to 10 minutes. Sure. And rotors are going to run 20 to 30. Whole different ball game. So how yeah. do you set your controller if you got both on the same, okay. same zone? Um, then, you know, number five would be the swing joint. Now, and you, I find that fascinating. Tell me about that. So the swing joint, this has been around for a long time. You know, contractors always use swing joints. Basically, it makes it easiest to, to set your heads. Wow. So you're just, you know, manufacturing with, some, with a couple of fittings and a, and a piece of pipe that you can cut to length. So it can be longer or shorter. Um, this way you can adjust the height of the head. So, or if you add bark dust, you can raise it up, you know. So then normally this would have been just the rigid PVC. Would have been just oh, a straight okay. piece. Oh, that's much more smart. <laughs> that's smart right. to do. And, and the, other, the other thing is, is if it, when, you're, when you're trenching in your pipe, you don't necessarily want to put the head right where the pipe is. Right. You know, otherwise you're zigging and zagging all over the place. Yeah. So you can put a head here and then put one here as you run through, you know, run, run down clever. your line. Um, and again, set in the height. You know, the head could be in line with the pipe if it needs to be, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. When, the head, when your bushes grow and you need to move it out a few inches, you can just add more funny pipe. This is called funny pipe, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is called funny pipe or swing pipe. Well, the name made me laugh, so. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I say it all the time. I can do it with a straight face, but um, yeah. So swing pipe or funny pipe, and you can make this as long as you want. So you could add and, and move the head out so that it's not been, being blocked by the bushes or what have you. Um, so Perfect. yeah. E easy, you know, even if you, you, you run over it with a heavy tractor or even, even a, you know, if the set ground is soft enough, even your car, and it just squishes it down, you dig around and just pull it back up again. Otherwise, you're snapping off your fittings. Yeah. So now, Cindy, a lot of people have already have plans, but they're really lost and confused. You are sure. more than willing to look these over and help oh, them, aren't you? Oh, yes. We, I can offer, um, you know, review of your if plans that you've done or you've had someone do um, just to make sure it's going to do what you think it's sure. going to do. I don't charge for that. Um, I, we can answer all the questions you like. Um, we do have a design service if you wanted us to do a design for you. Uh -huh. uh, we charge $100 for the design package. And then if you buy at least 75% of the product with us, we rebate you back $80. Oh, wow. So That's it's just perfect. a $20 final fee. That come with a, a layout of, of the design, a parts list, and an installation manual. Wonderful. So basically a custom kit. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I spring, the, the whole thing kind of scares me. So I love that I've known Cindy. I can come and get all the help I need to make the sprinkler system just right for my own garden. Now you can do the same. You can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Cindy, thank you so much. Thank you. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. At Subaru Garden Days, June 2nd at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. For three days only at Standard TV and Appliance. Huge price cuts on closeouts, overstocks, and display models. From Wolf, Sub-Zero, Thermador, Bosch, DCS, Mila, and more. Pro ranges with price cuts up to $2,000. Built-in refrigerators with price cuts up to $2,500. Plus, big discounts on washers, dryers, and dishwashers. Hurry, first come, first serve. Sale and Sunday, Standard TV and Appliance. Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden. Today I'm going to show you how to plant up a succulent planter for your front porch or patio. And as we plant this today, I want you to think of it more as like a flowering bouquet. Nice and tight and full so that we don't have to wait all summer for it to fill out. So let's get started. I picked out some succulents here just like we do for other planters with some thrillers, some fillers, and then some spillers to go over the side. So we're going to start in the middle and work our way out. But before we get started, let's make sure we have some good holes for drainage in the bottom. Whew. Okay. 
I may have gotten a little excited. I couldn't quite get everything that we had on the table into the planner, but you can see I got quite a few of them in here. And the nice thing is it's big and beautiful already. And throughout the summer, it's only gonna get more beautiful. These are all tropical succulents. So when winter comes, you're either gonna need to bring this one inside or just let it go and we'll do another one next year. If you need any information about which succulents to pick out, head on out to the store, we'd be happy to help you. This planter is not gonna need a lot of water, but maybe once a week and maybe fertilizer once a month, and that's it. And you'll have a big, beautiful planter all summer long. For more information, go to www.baumanfarms.com. Extend your growing season and escape to your own garden retreat in a Solex greenhouse from the Greenhouse Catalog. There is nothing like the taste of a bright, red, juicy, homegrown tomato. The bright, warm, durable design of a Solex greenhouse provides plenty of room to nurture your plants and enjoy your passion for years. Choose from five Solex greenhouse models or build your own with Solex panels. For all your gardening, greenhouse, and specialty growing needs, visit GreenhouseCatalog.com or give us a call. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. See an abundance of clematis, the queen of vines, at the Rogerson Clematis Garden and four private gardens in West Lynn and Lake Oswego during this year's Inviting Vines Garden Tour on Saturday, May 26th. Get your tickets at rogersonclematiscollection.org. So I am here with Josh again, and Josh, you are from uh, Northwest Outdoor Living and Renovation, right? That's correct. And you're, you're the ones really doing all of this really difficult work <laughs> to, to put in this new uh, patio. We came in and saw what it was like when you were taking it out and what that involved. Tell me what's going on here, because it's, it's not just a, a one-time little thing that's easy. Sure, sure. So, so when we were here last time, we were just starting to do the tear out. We were uh, pulling all the old cedar, all the right. rotted cedar out, making sure that nothing in the house was rotted, that everything was going to be a, a good adequate surface to attach to. Um, at this point you can see we've just about made it look like a deck again. We've got the, all the footings in, the beams, the framing. And, and let me say, by footings, because before when mm -hmm. they tore it out, there were literally footings, which is what I call footings. Sure. These were a big drill down. <laughs> you poured concrete around the main. That's, Absolutely. That's a sturdy footing. Yeah. So, so a lot of people with a ground level deck, in this case because of how low it is to the ground, permits are not required. Um, a lot of people when they build a deck just use little precast concrete footing right, blocks. Right, right. And that's what so, they had here before. Absolutely. So with that, typically speaking, what, just like what we saw out here when, when we were doing the tear out, they were just sitting right on the dirt. Right. You, they weren't getting below the frost line. They were on the top surface of the dirt. In Oregon here, we do get occasional issues with the snow, but even more importantly, the top surface of the, of the ground gets extremely wet when we have a moist year like yeah. this year. And then um, you've got to be concerned about things settling, corners of the decks dropping. We actually saw that in this project yeah. when we tore it apart. When we cut part of the deck out, it collapsed a few inches down to the ground. And I suspect that a lot of us, if not all of us, at some time have walked on a patio or a deck and it kind of bounces. Yeah, I say it's absolutely. like the Crystal Ballroom downtown in Portland. <laughs> you know, you feel that bounce. That's yes. really not good. That's not going to happen here, is it? <laughs> Ab absolutely not. So we, we uh, you can see we've got a big auger out here. We dug down at least 18 to 24 nice. inches into the ground. We poured multiple bags of concrete into it. We've got heavy duty uh, six by six uh, CB66 brackets set into the ground, bolted into six inch beams, not just little four inch right. beams. So it's going to be very solid. It's going to be very stable. The 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 goal, the end goal is that when you walk out onto this deck, it's it's not a concrete patio, but we want it to feel as stable as a concrete patio. You want patio. to feel the security there. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, you can see that one of the things that we've done as well is um, the old deck was built 24 inches on center, which is, which is standard for a cedar deck, but again, it does allow for some sponginess. It's not, not real stout. With the new fiber on deck that we're building, we're actually building it 12 inches on center. So we're putting a floor joist in between each right. of the floor joists that was here before. It's and, make and you know, Josh, that makes perfect sense to me because when you're going to go with a great product like a fiber on product that's going to cover this, Absolutely. you really want it to be sturdy and, and stable to last the life of the fiber on. Absolutely. And speaking of which, now I'm going to take a moment, I'm going to run over and talk to Derek from fiber on about what you guys are going to be putting on Perfect. top of here. Perfect. Sounds good. So now I'm standing here with Derek, and Derek, you are with Fiberon, which is the creator and maker of these products, right? Yep. So let, let's let's jump into this a little bit. I'm holding two different uh, ones here, but you have a lot of different colors besides these two, right? Yeah, we have many different colors, different profiles, different lines, but uh, we've got here our top tier products being the Horizon and the Symmetry line. And we've got two different colors because we're going to be putting it together uh, in a picture frame application so you get a contrast of two different textures and looks. Which I think looks always really super cool when people do that. So that's, that's clever. But then also I like that in the, in the patio itself, I hear that you're not going to see any of this kind of connecting because they're long enough to cover the whole thing. Is that right? Right, exactly. So we're using longer lengths so you're not going to see what we call uh, butt seams or butt ends. And by running a picture frame around the border of the deck, you're actually going to complete it off so you don't see the ends of any of the boards either. So even on the edges of, one, of two sides, you won't see that. Everything You'll see the, the whole thing, which will be beautiful. And then tell me a little bit about, about the, like the guarantees you have, because you have some really amazing guarantees on this stuff. Yeah, so this deck, once it's completed, it has a 25-year stain and fade warranty. And our claim is that it's going to look the way uh, it did the day you put it down for 25 years. And you also don't have to be concerned about uh, the traditional things that you experience with wood, which is going to be rotting, right. warping, or any splinters for that matter. And then you have a great website too, because tell me some of the things people can do when they go to it to see this stuff. So if you go to our website, you can see all of our colors. You can see everything laid out, but we also have a deck designer tool that allows you to design a deck to the shape that you would typically use. And you can use, um, as we were talking about the uh, picture frame, you can take that and build uh, the different contrasts or whatever you would want to see on your deck with railing, lighting, et cetera. And then do you also have a list on that website about where, where this stuff, where we can go to buy this? Yeah, and we have a list of all of our stocking dealers. And uh, when you use our tool as well, it actually will give you a layout of all the material you need should you want to do it yourself. Well, you know, it's not going to be very long now before, before Judy and I are here at the producer's house and we're going to have fun on this deck and we look forward to it. So if you're interested in getting a new deck and something that has some, some real time to it that's going to last, go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over to their website. You can make up something yourself. Thank you so much, Derek. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching Garden Time today, and we want to encourage you to go to both Adam and Peony Gardens and to Shriners Iris Gardens. It's really easy. It's exit 263, the Brooks exit off of I-5. And for more information on both of those wonderful places or on the show today, you can always go to gardentime.tv. <gasps> William, I forgot. My car is at Adelman's. Bye-bye. Oh, William. <laughs>